Then we just move across into our action cameras and we use those for what you guys see in the primary view for all of our sim racing videos. So as you'd know, we don't actually use any in-game or screen capture footage anymore. Everything we do is captured with external cameras which are then recording what's on the screen. That gives you that nice dynamic shot with our arms showing as we're turning the wheel as well. So we have this little shoulder mount here. And again, this is mounted to the um, seat mover platform. So what that gives is a nice dynamic shot as the seat's moving around, as you're kind of driving over bumps and stuff, it kind of gives that organic feel of the camera moving around with the car's movement on the road. So that's how we're able to achieve that. And what we mount on that is either our GoPro 9 or our Insta360 ONE R. Now, the GoPro 9 is really great because it has a HDMI output if you're using it with the media mod, which we have here, which is kind of this case around the outside. So we can take the HDMI output from the GoPro 9 and put it directly into our streaming computer. Again, we've got a video which we've done where we explained exactly how we do that. So we are able to get the footage into the streaming PC, put all our overlays in, put our webcam in for our pedal cam, and then we're able to stream that out live or record videos in that manner and that's really good for workflow as well because it means we're not having to edit all the footage together in post it's all kind of just done in real time we can just spit the video out straight away so obviously being a two-man team here at boosted media anything we can do to increase workflow and make things more streamlined is you know a massive advantage for us so that's a really great advantage of the gopro 9 low light performance isn't absolutely fantastic with this camera though so that's where the Insta360 ONE R comes into play. So this has got a one inch sensor on the front. We do also have the little 360 module for this as well. We might actually do a separate video where we go into more detail on comparing these two cameras and maybe having a look at this in more detail too, because it is a really cool little gadget that we've discovered recently. So this is what we've been using for all of our point of view shots for about the last maybe month, month and a half now. One inch sensor on the front of this. So it does have the bigger sensor for more low light performance. Obviously the more light that gets in through to the sensor, the better things look. And what we've found basically with this camera, we get slightly less grain, we get a little bit more definition in the color, skin tones look a little bit better as well. One of the things you might've noticed when we were using the GoPro in our uh, live stream videos is that sometimes my arms look a little bit yellow or they lack a little bit of definition, they look a little bit flat. Uh, this camera definitely improves that quite significantly. And if you watch any of our more recent videos, like the ones we've been doing in AMS2 recently, they're all done with this. And then I put this helmet on my head, it looks pretty ridiculous. I strap it on as well, because safety first. And what this allows me to do is have the camera in a nice low position, because when you have the camera up high, because we're running on a screen setup like this, and if Tom comes over here and actually moves the camera up and down, you'll see what I mean. If you're not in exactly the right position, because we're looking at a two dimensional screen here, things get out of proportion and look very funny. It's not like when you move up in a real car, you can kind of look up over the dash because we're not running any sort of tracking or anything like that for the camera position other than the side to side movement that we've got with the track IR. So we need to make sure our camera position is in exactly the right spot so it looks good on camera, but obviously we need to be able to drive it as well. So what I do is I sit in the rig, nice and low with the helmet on, and that is able to give us that nice perspective and I'm still able to see what I'm doing. And you can see, even though I've got that metal bar that's kind of passing in front of my eyes, it's low enough down that I'm focusing past it. And it's kind of like a halo in an F1 car. You don't really notice it after a while. If I kind of pay attention to it or close one eye, I can see it pretty clearly. But when I'm looking at what I'm doing, it's kind of just like a blurry bar in the middle. Kind of like if you just hold your finger up in between your eyes and do the old trick that I used to do to cross your eyes. It kind of just looks like that. So not too impeding and it's not too heavy either. It's nice and light. So yeah, it works really well. The main challenge that we had was just trying to find a helmet that didn't have a big bulb on the back of it that kind of bumped up against the headrest because that kind of makes you crank your head forward. We also needed to have something that had a brace on the back here too that was uh, going to allow us to tighten everything up and kind of fix it in position so it wouldn't slop around on our head. One of the most challenging things we found, and we did actually experiment with a few different things. We had a um, GoPro head mounted strap as well. And what we found with this is when you put it on your head, even though you might have it in the perfect position at the start of the video, what would happen is it would ultimately end up a little bit sideways or maybe drooping a little bit or just moving around. So it'd look great at the start of the video, but after a 20 minute race, the camera angle would be all the way out. And again, if you come over here and have a look, you can imagine if the camera does move out of alignment and you start seeing the black area above the screen, then you know obviously the, the immersion's ruined and you know that kind of just ruins the whole effect. So trying to again sort of just maximize workflow and make sure we're doing things in the most efficient way and that's kind of what we came up with. So it looks a little bit silly, 
but it definitely gets the job done. And yeah, we've been really impressed with that uh, Insta360 ONE R. So far, it definitely works better in the low light conditions than the GoPro does. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an HDMI output though. Uh, and it also won't allow you to stream via RMTP using the one inch sensor, which is a bit of a disadvantage. So we do still need to use the GoPro for when we're doing our live streaming or anything like that, if we're trying to record races with overlays. But for anything else, we're using the Insta360 ONE R at the moment.